The Mamula 8 is the latest release in a series of very tiny Cinewu that remove the need to carry an external camera like an Insta360 Go or GoPro by using the DJI O3 unit on board. This camera can go up to 4K and you can do up to 100 FPS at 2.7K. Really nice footage and you can get a teeny tiny footprint, something that literally fits in the palm of your hand. This one goes up to an 85 millimeter size giving you three bladed 2.3 inch props it has a 12 amp esc on board an f4 processor on this all in one and it uses the bmi 270 gyro inside this board you're also going to have built in express lrs and it's plug and play with this dji 03 unit this is one of the lowest price options on the market the kit without the dji 03 unit is only 94.99 meaning for an additional 230 dollars you slap these two things together ready to form Voltron and boom just like FPV Voltron your powers combine and you're ready to take on some really nice footage now I have to say for flying outdoors around close objects the extra prop size and these motors 1103 11,000 kv really make a nice combination for feeling good you have enough power to toss it around no you're not going to be doing too many freestyle tricks but you actually could do a little baby power loop without too much trouble this one has a little bit more durability on that molded canopy and it has a traditional layout where the prop motors are facing upwards and so it's not a pusher configuration i do have to say of all of these supply your own o3 units this one was the most difficult to put together it's just very fiddly the way that you have to like put this little nut on the bottom and put the th screw through it it makes you squeeze it in there at just a little bit of an angle i mean like why did I did I put this upside down? Like I don't think I did, but like why? It's gonna break almost. Why did they do that? Ugh. And then the same kind of thing with this USB down here. That's a little bit of an annoyance. I don't know. Maybe if I had a little bit different cable would fit a little bit easier, but this really feels like I'm shoving it in there at sort of an awkward angle. Don't love that, but, and make sure that it stays lined up. I feel like I've witnessed surgeries on Grey's Anatomy that were much less complex than putting this thing together, but eventually I did get it without having to pull every last one of my hairs out thank goodness because it is probably one of my best features the battery that you're going to want to use for this is a 450 milliamp hour 2s pack now i actually have a few decent 450 and 520 2s packs but they won't fit in this in fact the only battery i had that would fit was the beta fpv 450 2s and it's weird because it's almost the exact same size as the gnb but the gnb just wouldn't fit so i don't know if they just like copied beta fpv on the size for this but that's annoying luckily i did have this would fit but you really really are going to want to check to make sure when you're battery shopping one that will fit so for sure the beta fpv one will i'll put a link to this in the description below so you can get one the antenna for this express lrs is just a tiny little bit of copper wire now i did check with the express lrs guys and they have measured out very specific 31 millimeter length which is what you want for that express lrs 2.4 reception but i still don't really trust these to go nearly as far as a dedicated antenna that i could pull out far and away in fact you can't even really see it because it's just like mushed in there i did get at least one fail safe not very far away from myself now, i was flying inside the car but what are you gonna do guys it's 100 degrees here in texas right now 2.3 inch 85 millimeter from corner to corner making this quite nice i am using this little k and f concepts nd filter i got a four pack of those that has various strengths on there this is the nd8 i'm using it because it's a particular sunny day when i was testing this thing out and i needed a little bit of sunglasses for your lens and that's exactly what this is you can see it just fits on there and this will fit on the avada 
or any of the DJI O3 cameras and it comes with a four pack so you have different strengths depending on how bright or overcast that it is on that particular day. One gripe that I have is the camera position on this thing. No matter how you do it, you can't really lower it too much because then you're going onto this little post right there. I don't know if you could see it. And so by having the camera so far above, you can see if you were to flip over, your camera lens is what you're landing on right there. And I don't really love that. The camera lens is not replaceable, meaning you'd have to buy an entire DJI camera if you did manage to squash it. So I don't, I just, I don't know. The Pavo Pico doesn't do that, even though it's not really super protected either, but that's sort of an annoyance. If you do want a full comparison video of these two head to head, leave me a comment. Maybe I'll do that. Just a Cliff's Notes version. This one flies way, way better outdoors. This one flies with a lot more control indoors, but it doesn't have the power outdoors. So it's kind of like a traditional whoop thing. Most people are going to like the 31 millimeter size on a traditional tiny whoop, but some people like that 75 millimeter, you know, bigger size, just a little bit better with 40 millimeter props, but it's not super fantastic outdoors. I mean, neither one of them is going to fly as good as a traditional cinema whoop, like the Fox Whoop 3.5 by Fox here. This is the unbreakable drone, the three and a half inch version, but look how much more gigantic this is. This is super loud. If you were to fly this around like a parking lot with people, it would sound like about 17 vacuum cleaners on at the same time on high setting. But either one of these is very, very quiet. I did have a lot more fun flying this thing around park flying style. It was just really nice. One other tiny gripe is that this DJI connector is very close to this prop line. So when you're installing all of this together, really be sure that you tuck this cable harness way back there. Like I had it tucked to where I thought was a good level, but this yellow wire just creeped out and clipped it and snipped it. Thank goodness the yellow one I don't need because that's only if you're using DJI control. You don't want to be up a creek on that if you were using the DJI for control. Flight times on this, you're looking at about two, two and a half minutes if you're giving it some juice. If you're really pushing it, I would say a minute and a half to two minutes. And if you're just cruising leisurely, probably three and a half, maybe four and a half minutes might be in the realm of possibility. This one is quite handsome. It's big enough to where you might take it serious. It doesn't quite look exactly like a toy, but it's still very cute. Some pros and some cons. This one is gonna save you a good 15 or 20 bucks over this one and it's gonna go faster while it's doing it this one feels really nice outside but i feel like it would be just a little bit too fast and too powerful for flying inside so if that's your goal maybe go with a little something smaller yes you can do it if you have the skills but if you have any small kids small pets or small tempered wives then you may want to skip this one for trying to do inside tours now if you really spent a lot of time focused on learning how to fly this you could definitely do it but would i choose it over the avada i probably would just put the avada in auto level mode and fly that around even though it's like many times heavier it just is easier to control inside this is actually still fairly easy but it can get away with the, from you if you're not super used to flying in these really tight spaces and i might just go for something a little little bit better because the thing about the bigger you go yes you get more weight but you have a little bit more power to correct error so this comes into like that weird middle ground 85 millimeter with an o3 gives you a weight that you don't really want to hit a wall it's not going to probably punch through it right but you could still leave a mark and it might be a little bit too loud for some people but it could definitely be done if you were going to fly into a crowd i feel like the battery of this lasts slightly longer if you were really cruising but it's just so tempting because it feels actually pretty good it's so tempting to push that throttle and really get going and but before you know it if you do that a few times the battery is pretty much drained i personally really like these tiny tiny cine whoops you know just a few years ago if you wanted a cine whoop you were looking at something this size guys look at look how much tinier it is uh this is a three and a half inch cine whoop and it's really tough and you can carry a lot you could easily carry a gopro with this you can't do it with this but do you really need to now that the dji o3 is here for a lot of purposes the image quality is really quite nice and i don't know if i really need anything more than that thanks guys